family to our first night of Holy Week Unwind. We're so glad that you could join us. We worship. Let mercy 
Lord God, we just, we love you. We worship you today, Lord God. We just ask you to be with us today, Lord. Meet us here. Lord, have your way in us. Wherever we are, Lord, let us just be servants of you today. Lead us and guide us, Lord God. Let us be open to hearing your word, what you have to say to us, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Thanks for joining us for our Holy Week Unwind. Uh, it's a little bit of a different way of doing uh, a Holy Week. And really, you know, honestly, uh, as Pentecostals, we don't often do this full unwrap of Holy Week. We normally recognize Palm Sunday and Easter. Um, but we're going to walk through the, the different nights of Holy Week uh, together each night at 7 o'clock here on Facebook and then at CalvaryLighthouse.tv. And I hope you can join us uh, as we do that. Tonight, we're starting with... Palm Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday is uh, considered, you know, the, the, we oftentimes hear of it referred to as the triumphant entry. It's the time that Jesus comes to Jerusalem and the people of the city celebrate the return of the king. Now, here's, here's what I want to point out as we talk about Holy Week. Um, there's really nothing in the Bible that gives us any indication that this is a uh, different week. We just know through the events of things uh, that really significant things happen. But in the time that Jesus was coming, people didn't realize how significant this week was going to be. And for us as Christians, we can now look at it through the lens of time and realize the, the monumental world shifts that happened in this week. And so I want to start tonight at looking in Matthew chapter 21. And so if you want to open your Bible, if you have it with you, uh, you can do it on your device. That's fine too. Um, we're going to do Matthew chapter 21. Uh, and we're just going to look at the first 11 verses here. Um, here's, here's just what we're going to do each night this week. We're going to walk through different verses on what happened each night of the week leading into Easter, and actually also including Easter Monday, we'll go through that also. Um, and each night we'll talk about different verses, and we'll just spend a few minutes together. We'll worship like we did tonight, and then we'll just spend a few minutes um, talking together. Uh, probably just, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes total in together. But I think it's a great way to unpack the week as we come into the Easter season. And so Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 11. Uh, and when we read this, remember that this is a Sunday. This is happening on a Sunday. That's why we, we, we call this Palm Sunday, because that is the day of the week that it happened. It says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And once you will, and once, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and He will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter Zion, "See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey." The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while, they cut, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him and those that followed him shouted, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. We know that when Jesus rode in on the donkey, that was the same symbol that was used by kings offering a peace treaty. He came in and the crowd was so excited because they knew they knew because of the symbolism of how Jesus came that it was their king returning. You know, the people of Israel had been waiting for a king to return. 
They had been waiting for a king to come back to rescue them from Roman oppression and difficult times. And so when Jesus came, they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. And they were saying our Messiah, our Savior had come. The people were excited about Jesus coming because they saw him as the deliverer. Those that were in power, they weren't excited about Jesus coming. It's funny how often when people, they rise to a position of power, they want to stay in power. That's why the Pharisees weren't excited to see Jesus. That's why they challenged him and questioned him because he challenged their religious sensibilities and he really challenged their position of power and authority in the world. That's one of the most significant things about Jesus coming in the way that he did is that there was no longer a barrier. There was no longer something separating people from the presence of God. Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus came to be with people. You know, when we come into God's presence, we experience transformation. That Palm Sunday that first triumphant entry, the world was beginning to experience the significance of change. And here's the very real fact. Just like the Pharisees responded, oftentimes when people come into the presence of the anointed Holy Spirit of God or the presence of Jesus there in our, in our midst, they resist his presence. Because in order to accept Jesus, as he comes, and he comes with his arms wide open, ready to receive all of us. In order to accept the way Jesus comes, we have to be willing to lay down our position, our rights, and say, you are my king. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are my king. And as we reflect on that triumphant entry, and as we reflect on what happened that night, that day when, when Jesus came in, the people lined the streets and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. They recognized their Savior had come. And they thought at that moment that their deliverance was going to take one form. And we know because of the lens of history that their deliverance was going to be different than anything they could have ever imagined. And we also know that by the end of the week, that crowd turned because Jesus didn't come as a conquering king. He came in a different manner than they ever expected. And as the crowd rejoiced on Sunday, by the end of the week, we know that they had turned on him. And this is my encouragement for us tonight as we reflect on Palm Sunday. The reality is any one of us could be a member of that crowd. We could rejoice at the high point of when Jesus first comes and say, Hallelujah, Hosanna, 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 we praise you. But when Jesus challenges us to be transformed and changed, we can turn and resist giving that power to Jesus. And so my encouragement to us today, we want to rejoice at all times with Jesus. That to me is the message of Palm Sunday. The Savior has come. Rejoice. Lay down your power. Lay down your rights. And let him transform you and bless you. And as we unwrap the rest of the Holy Week, as part of the uh, Holy Week Unwind, I want you to have your, whole, your, your spirit be open and your heart be ready to receive. Because Jesus wants to do something significant in you this week. Jesus wants to do something significant in you every day. And when the people shouted Hosanna, the reason they shouted Hosanna with all that they had, the reason they cut branches down and laid their cloaks out was because they recognized Jesus was the hope they had been waiting for. Jesus is the hope you had been waiting for. Jesus, today, as we begin 
this unwind of the Holy Week. I pray that you would speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Let us surrender to you all that we hold on to, all that would hinder us from praising you from the beginning of the day to the end of the night. I pray today that you'd work on our hearts, work on our spirits today. In your precious name, amen, amen. I would invite you to join us again tomorrow night at seven o'clock uh, as we look at Holy Monday in this Holy Week leading to Easter. God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight.